be interesting to take a look at some ways that you can avoid becoming a victim of a crime in Ireland. Unfortunately, sometimes there's absolutely nothing you can do, you're victimized, and that's just not your fault, it just happens. But we're gonna look at a couple of things that you can do to lessen your likelihood of that happening to you in Ireland. Ireland actually has a very low crime rate, and it's pretty safe for solo travelers and female travelers alike. The murder rate is very low, guns are illegal, but however, Opportunistic crime is on the rise. Unsurprisingly, alcohol is a factor in most crimes, either for the victim or the perpetrator. And with the recent economic downturn, it's likely that crime rates will rise. However, if you are traveling to Ireland, I have to say it is definitely one of the safer places that you can go in the world. In fact, it was voted the 12th most peaceful country in the entire world in a recent poll by the 2020 Vision of Humanity Global Peace Index, which is something I've never heard of, but. That's what they said, it's very peaceful. Dublin, the capital city, of course, relates to most of the tourist-related crimes, 73% of them, in fact. So the chances are, if you're going outside of Dublin, you're lowering your chances again. Robbery is up there in the crimes that are committed against tourists, so I'm gonna give you a couple of things that you can look out for today, just ways to keep your wits about you. Before I get into it, today's video is sponsored by our lovely friends at Surfshark, yay! Surfshark has been an absolute game changer for me. It's an app and browser extension that basically lets you place your laptop or phone anywhere in the world and lets you access the internet as if you were in that country. So even if you're in America and you're blocked from viewing Irish websites, you can. You can watch my Netflix, I can watch your Netflix, I can watch the Netflix in Zimbabwe. Does Zimbabwe have Netflix? I don't know. Yes, it does. But it is not just for watching TV and movies. It of course lets you access and unblock websites and content you may not usually be able to see, but it also adds an extra layer of security when you're online to keep all your passwords, photos, videos, and things safe. You can go anywhere in the world, log on to any Wi-Fi, and Surfshark has your security covered. Just use my code Diane for 83% off plus three extra months for free. In 2021, we need to be just as aware of what we're doing online and protect ourselves as we are in the real world, which we're going to talk about today. Thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this channel. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is that if you are getting a hired car, make sure they don't advertise the fact that it's a hired car with a sticker or a bumper sign or something like that. Because hired cars are seven times more likely to be targeted than local cars. And how do they know it's a hired car? If you've got a bumper sticker. Anything like signs in the window or logos on the side, try and ask for a different car. As I already mentioned, opportunistic crime is way higher than organized crime, so don't do something silly like leave a bag in the back of the car because maybe your window will get smashed and that bag taken. Hey, it's just your groceries, but they didn't know that. And while I'm talking about bag snatching, bag snatching is a huge thing in Dublin city center. One thing you wanna be super aware of is if you're on a pedestrianized street walking close to the side of the road and you're carrying a bag, there are people driving up and down on bicycles and motorbikes and they might just snatch your bag away. That is a thing that I've heard of happening to local people. So common sense things like putting your bag on the other side, walking closer to the wall, just generally watching your back might help protect you. The next thing is public transport can be very good in Ireland, particularly in the cities. However, you definitely need to be aware of your surroundings when you're taking them, particularly late at night. On a bus, you're gonna need to ring the bell ahead of your stop, but if you notice somebody coming up behind you as you're getting off in a very dark place, maybe you're gonna wanna skip to the next stop. Just use your intuition, you have it for a reason. The other thing is if you are using the Lewis Overground train, a good idea is not to sit right by the door where somebody can easily reach in and grab your belongings. Also, like most trains, the Lewis stops at every location, so you might not wanna go right up to the door until you're good and ready to get off, otherwise you are signaling to potential people who might want to victimize you that you're getting off at the next stop. A huge thing to be aware of, especially if you're a tourist in Ireland, is to beware of the banter. Irish people have the gift of the gab and mostly that's a really good thing, but unfortunately in the wrong hands, it can be a bad thing. It is said that an Irish man can talk you into willingly handing over your wallet to him, so... Just be aware that we're very charming. We're charming as a people. My biggest tip in this instance, and yes, I am going to say specifically for women because we are taught and conditioned as we're growing up to always be nice and be pleasant to people, don't be a bitch. Sometimes it's okay to be a bitch. I don't know why you're looking at me. 
If your spidey senses are tingling, be rude, be weird, do whatever you need to do, just get away from the situation. Don't worry about being nice or insulting somebody or hurting their feelings. If something feels wrong, just leave. If you feel uncomfortable, you don't owe anybody anything. And on that note of not owing anybody anything, do not forget the golden rule in Ireland about doing your round. I don't care if you're a woman. In Ireland, if somebody buys you a pint, you need to buy them a pint back. That is the rule. I'm not saying it doesn't happen that you go out with a nice gentleman and he buys you a drink just for the sake of it, but you're gonna probably wanna buy him a drink back. As an Irish woman, that's just my personal rule. Of course, if you know the guy, it's different. You might get in your round anyway, or maybe he's just a really generous guy. My point is, in America, a guy will buy you a drink for the sake of buying you a drink and to have a chat. In Ireland, if a guy buys you a drink, he generally means he's getting in on a round with you and you're gonna wanna buy him a drink back. That's just my experience of living there. It might sound harsh, but that is what it is. It's good old Irish manners to buy him a pint back. The next thing is the ATM scam is very prevalent in Ireland. If you haven't heard of it, it probably exists where you are too. How this scam works is you put in your card, you type in your stuff, you go to take out 50 euro and it doesn't come out. What's happened? They've actually clipped something on over the machine and it's taken your money. And so you go away to maybe try and find somebody inside the bank. And in the meantime, they run off with your money and they clip their thing back on for the next unaware person. Honestly, if this is happening on an ATM, it usually gets around the community pretty fast, but it's a thing that happens, so just be aware. The next thing, and your mom told you this one, don't take a lift from a stranger claiming to be a taxi driver because unless it says taxi, it's not a taxi driver. Ireland is very unique in terms of taxis in that we have very, very strict laws around them. Uber is not a thing in Ireland. A taxi is a taxi if it says taxi on it, or if you book it through a verified taxi app. Freenow is the most common app used in Ireland. Uber can only be used for booking limousines and private cars. If you're going that way, more power to you. I've never done it myself. I strongly advise if you're coming to Ireland to get the free now app on your phone. You can basically get a car to come and pick you up somewhere, drop you off somewhere else. You can pay through your phone. You can of course flag down taxis in Ireland and that's fine, but be sure that they say taxi on them and they should all display their registered taxi number. Also, this might seem obvious for some, but others not so much. A horse will not be cheaper than a taxi. If you end up getting a ride with a horse and cart, it's going to be more expensive than a taxi. Fun, but expensive. Next thing I'm going to warn you to be wary of is massive groups of teenagers, okay? This is kind of applies in a lot of countries, but I find Ireland, it particularly applies because the law has absolutely no hold over teenagers. And I was a teenager once myself, and we knew it. As individuals, everybody's well behaved and fine, but when you get a group of teenagers in a gang, they suddenly become potentially a little bit more dangerous. So if it was me walking alone at night and I saw a massive group of teenagers, I might just walk on the other side of the road. Just a small tip. Again, not saying all teenagers in Ireland are bad, it's just something to be aware of. The next thing to be aware of is something that happens commonly in a lot of cities around the world. It's begging. Now begging happens everywhere. It's an unfortunate side effect of homelessness and there is a lot of homelessness in Ireland. However, what you wanna be wary of is organized begging. And there was a documentary on this on RTE a couple of years back. They uncovered the fact that a lot of Romanian gangs were putting individuals out on the street to get the money. They, at the end of the day, went and pooled it all together and the individual ended up getting very little, they were doing work for the big crime gang. There are loads of really great legitimate charities in Ireland which you can help people through and there are some very legitimate, very needy people out there. A lot of times you'll find people asking for a euro for the hostel which is actually not really a thing. If you're familiar with a guest on this channel, Paul Irish Jesus worked in a homeless hostel for a really long time and paying for the hostel is something that the Irish government does to subsidize the hostel itself. You might also be a bit surprised, especially I think if you're coming from America, that a lot of Irish homeless people don't look all that down and out. And that's just a thing. I remember when I was in San Francisco, I was absolutely shocked at how homeless people looked in America because to me, they looked like they were dressed for a film 
and it was not something like the homelessness I had seen in Ireland. There are a lot of resources for homeless people in Ireland, of course other things complicate the situation like extenuating factors including mental health, addiction, things like that which make it harder for people to access those things. How hostels work in Ireland is the hostels are usually private entities and they charge the government a certain amount of money to allow the homeless individuals to stay inside of the hostels. Ireland even has wet hostels where people who are addicted to alcohol can go for the night. Usually a homeless person needs to claim some kind of benefit in order to access these hostels. So if they are in a precarious situation wherein there is drugs involved or there is some kind of addiction or there is a mental health issue, it obviously is a lot more difficult for people and homelessness is a big problem in Ireland. In the first 11 months of 2020, 56 homeless people died in Ireland and that's just not good enough. But if you are approached by a homeless person or you see a homeless person begging on the street, just maybe have a second look if you think they're part of an organization or if they really are there as an independent entity who really needs some help. That's definitely a judgment call on your part. I can't make it for you. Also, while it might seem obvious to some, opening your wallet up leaves you open to somebody taking everything that's inside your wallet. So be careful. The next scam you might come across as a tourist to Ireland is a very new one and it's to do with COVID, of course. When there's something awful happening in the world, there's always awful people trying to take advantage of it. Of course, the rules for travel are changing all the time, but if you are visiting Ireland currently as a legitimate tourist, you may get a text from the HSE, who are the legitimate government organization in charge of health in Ireland, but you need to be very sure where the text is coming from by checking the number. It's really easy to Google the legitimate numbers that they will come from, but if you get a text claiming to be from the HSE, trying to do some kind of tracking on you and sending you a link, be very, very wary before you click on it because it might just be one of those good old fashioned phishing scams. I said good, there's nothing good about it. Even if you're curious, don't click the link because it could be just something not good. And when you click on the link, they suddenly have all your information and they have your telephone number and suddenly you're on a list for all kinds of scams, so just don't do it. And finally, the number one thing you need to know in Ireland in relation to crime is the number is 999, not 911. It's even been programmed into my head 911, but it's 999 in Ireland or 112, which is the international European number for emergency situations. Remember, if you do come to Ireland, it's a pretty safe place, but like anywhere else, you need to keep your wits about you. So hopefully a couple of these tips will help you. And I'll see you on the other side. Bye. Oh, you can't go backwards anymore. You look like a boy. Yeah, do you want to come here? So today I thought it would be interesting to look at some, I was going to say 10. I don't think I wrote 10. I think this is a general thing as opposed to a list. It's kind of a list. Okay, I'm just, let's not get pedantic about it. Oh, 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 big jump, big jump for a little man, huh? Big jump for a little man, yay! Mismatched sockies. It's probably round about 10 points. <laughs> 